Good evening, everyone. I'm Alexa, the resident ooky spooky girly, but today I was feeling the Barbie pink vibes and wanted to try and uh, lighten up what's about to be a terrifying video. I've personally never received anything weird in the mail I didn't just order for myself, but growing up during the anthrax craze definitely left an impact on my psyche for sure. Wild to think that, you know, just the last month, the Unabomber of all people passed away. Question for y'all, have you ever received something weird in the mail? Let me know, and here are the top five scary, unexplained packages people actually received. In fifth place, we have Dollar Tree pills. I was perusing the interweb message boards for Tales today when I stumbled upon this anonymous mess that I just had to report on because of how perfectly it fit the bill. It was literally titled, I got a suspicious package in the mail. What do I do with it? I love that whoever this was just literally turned to the internet for help instead of calling any kind of authority figure because, you know, why not in this digital age? They claim they live in a main road that stays fairly busy and on that day, unexpectedly, she and her husband had a package delivered to their front porch. The duo claimed to have not ordered anything in any capacity, further explaining that they were completely done with all holiday shopping, and this was posted on December 7th of 2022, so that checks. I'm also someone who likes to have their holiday shopping done early, since I'm usually working almost daily every December, and I hate being in malls when they're busy. Anytime I'm in a mall these days, you never see me without my headphones on. The package said something along the lines of, Dollar Tree employee gift for the fam, leave on the front porch. Here's where the really creepy elements kick in. Underneath that weird line was our narrator's exact street address, and she claims that not only has she or her husband never worked for Dollar Tree, but they're the only residents of that property for the last decade. She found it very suspicious that there was a fairly large box without a name on the package, and rightfully so. So originally she did not open the box or the plastic around the box, but instead grabbed it and threw it a far distance from her house in her yard because, you know, she didn't know what the box was. Good common sense on her part for that. Sorta. It's a good thing the stupid box wasn't sensitive to being picked up, but once again, props to her for getting it away from the house. She made a point of mentioning that she had a baby about a year ago and struggled with postpartum anxiety that sometimes verges on paranoia in case she was being too sensitive or reactionary. Trust me, mystery lady, if I were you, I'd be reacting more, not less. She mentioned that she had called the local Dollar Tree, who said they were unaware of any promotions like that and didn't know what to tell her. She had also scrubbed her hands about four times since touching the plastic around the box that was delivered and was now very anxious. The message board convinced our storyteller that since she had thrown the box and nothing had happened, it should be safe to open and investigate. Personally, I would have advised against it, but armed with gloves and a mask, that's what our gal did. Inside, she discovered a slew of pills that the interweb identified as Kratom, or Kratom, which is allegedly illegal and addicting. The narrator turned them over to the police and called it a day. Good move on her part. In fourth place, we have a series of packages in Aberdeen. So on July 2nd of this year, at around 7.30 at night, a suspicious package was discovered near Greystone Crescent in the Aberdeen neighborhood of Kamloops, British Columbia. Honestly, pretty daring to deliver a package like that in broad daylight. Originally, the RCMP blocked off the neighborhood until the explosive disposal unit arrived as a precaution, and good thing they did, because it turns out it was a pipe explosion device. The device was able to be safely removed and taken care of, but this story does not end here. While the authorities were pleading with anyone who might have had security or dashcam footage to come forward, another suspicious package was delivered. This arrival happened on July 4th and took place less than a kilometer away from the original drop on Sifton Avenue. At the time, an RCMP spokesperson stated that they were treating both incidents as separate cases, but to me, there has to be a link. The second package was discovered to also be an explosive device, and uh, jeepers. As of the time of filming this, no one has been arrested or singled out for being the culprit, and that scares me. Someone somewhere has it out for that neighborhood, or whoever got delivered. In third place, someone targeted Doug Ford. On February 18th of 2020, before the world as we knew it went to chaos, Ontario Premier Doug Ford received a suspicious delivery to his home, and unlike his late brother, I don't believe this one was drugs. I guess I have to clarify. But a package strange enough to alert the cops, so not something questionable he ordered for himself. He wasn't home when it was delivered, but his wife was, and she called the police. The Premier's office did confirm that Toronto police were investigating a suspicious package that was found at his home in Etobicoke. The package came through the actual mail, so they were able to rule out tracking anyone down in the neighborhood or dash cam footage like our last spot. No one was injured, and Toronto police said that the explosion disposal unit had deemed the package not dangerous. The substance was determined to be a mixture of non-toxic materials, but the police have not said what was exactly inside the package Package, so feel free to make guesses in the comments. Honestly, my bet is on human excrement. It's the most basic thing to send a politician you don't agree with. And to this day, no one officially knows what was sent or who sent it. Well, other than the cops. 
In second place, we have a whole series of celebrity explosives. Time to travel back to October of 2018, when Donald Trump was in power in the United States, before the Panini of course, and when someone out there had too much time on their hands and decided to make explosive devices. I'm not unfamiliar with mentally unhinged folks who have too much time on their hands, but normally in my world I call those folks cosplayers, and as you can see, I would fall into that category. But they're mostly harmless. This person though, uh, decided to cross a line. On Monday, October 22nd, a pipe explosive was delivered by hand to billionaire Democratic donor George Soros at his home in the New York City suburbs, and it wasn't just a Halloween prank. The device was about 6 inches long, and it was in an 8 by 10 inch envelope made to look like it was delivered through the mail, and it was left in his mailbox. I'm questioning his security. The caretaker of the property was the one who discovered it, and since it looked suspicious to him, he dropped it in the woods away from the residence and called the Bedford Police Department, which sent officers to the scene. Thankfully no one was harmed. The next day, devices addressed to Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama were found in the mail. The day after that, explosives were also discovered in packages meant for Joe Biden, former Attorney General Eric Holder, and Representative Maxine Waters, along with one discovered in the mailroom of CNN's New York office that was addressed to former CIA Director John Brennan. But on Thursday morning, a package was discovered that wasn't meant for a politician, but instead a celebrity, Robert De Niro to be exact. Similar to the politicians and public figures listed above, at the time he was also a very loud critic of Donald Trump, but really. Who wasn't? The package arrived Thursday morning at the New York City offices of Tribeca Enterprises, his film and television production company, and the organization behind the Tribeca Film Festival. Located at 375 Greenwich Street in Manhattan, the building is also the site of his restaurant, the Tribeca Grill. The package bore similar markings to the others, including a return address labeled Debbie Wasserman Schultz, a Democratic House representative from Florida. Just like the other packages, this one had six American flag stamps arranged in two rows, with no postmark visible on the front. Police were alerted to the package which was on the building's 7th floor Thursday at 4.45 a.m. and were able to transport it safely to the New York Police Department's Bronx facility for further investigation. It was eventually discovered that Cesar Sayoc of Florida was responsible for all 16 devices and he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Apparently the explosives were designed specifically not to explode, just to scare, but still. In first place, we have the delivery of body parts. So before we get into the nitty gritty of this one, I feel the need to give all the context, so heads up, this one gets gruesome and graphic. At 11 a.m. on May 29th of 2012, a package containing a left foot was delivered to the national headquarters of the Conservative Party of Canada. The package was stained red, had a foul smell, and was marked with a red heart symbol. Another package containing a left hand was intercepted in a Canada Post processing facility addressed to the Liberal Party. A janitor discovered a decomposing torso inside a suitcase left in a garbage pile in the alley behind an apartment building in the Snowden area of Montreal. He first saw the suitcase on May 25th, but it was not picked up due to the large amount of garbage that day. After searching the scene, police recovered human remains, red clothes, and papers identifying the suspect, as well as sharp and blunt objects from the back alley. Footage from surveillance cameras inside the building showed a suspect bringing numerous garbage bags outside, and the images matched the suspect who was captured on video at the post office in Côte des Neiges. A note was found with the package sent to the Conservative Party, saying six body parts had been distributed, and the perpetrator would kill again. The other three packages also contained notes, but their contents were undisclosed by police, who cited their concerns about possible cause Bobbycat crimes. Yeah, I get it, I've seen criminal minds. On June 5th, a package containing a right foot was delivered to St. George's School, and another package containing a right hand to Falls Creek Elementary School in Vancouver, British Columbia. It was then confirmed that both packages were sent from Montreal. I guess it's important to discuss the victim first, so here goes nothing. Jun Lin, also known as Justin, arrived in Canada in 2010 with the intention of starting a new life and study computer engineering. He settled down in Quebec and was attending school and working in the area. He was living with a man for a period of time as an openly gay man here in Canada, but sadly was not out to his parents, who were pressuring him to settle down and marry a woman, and tension from that caused him to break up with his boyfriend. I swear, it's relevant. After breaking up with his boyfriend, he had been using Grindr and other web applications to meet with men. Through a Craigslist ad, which I don't recommend doing, he met Luca Magnata, and sadly, that's where this tale goes sour. Now, Lynn was last seen on May 24th of 2012, and his friends reported getting a text message from his phone at about 9pm. His boss became suspicious when he did not show up for his shift the next day, which was out of character for him. Three of his friends went into his apartment on May 27th and reported him officially missing on the 29th. The last images showing him alive were taken by a surveillance camera on the night of May 24th and showed uh, Lynn and Magnata entering the apartment 
building where Magnata lived. On May 25th, an 11 minute video titled One Lunatic, One Ice Pick was uploaded online depicting a naked male tied to a bed frame, repeatedly impaled with what was later established to be a screwdriver, not an ice pick, and a kitchen stabby implement. Uh, he was then dismembered, followed by acts of necrophilia. The perpetrator used that kitchen device and a fork to cut off some flesh, and police have seen a longer version of the video where acts of people munching were committed. Several hours after killing Lynn, Magnata booked a round trip ticket for a flight from Montreal to Paris using a passport with his own name. We love the arrogance. On May 26, an attorney from Montana attempted to report the video to Toronto Police, his local sheriff, and the FBI, but the report was dismissed by officials. Police confirmed on May 30th that the video was sadly authentic and identified Lynn as the victim. On June 13th of 2012, the four limbs and the torso were matched to Lynn using DNA samples from his family, and on July 1st, his head was recovered at the edge of a small lake in Montreal's Anklingon Park after police received an anonymous tip. Going back to June 4th, Magnata was apprehended by Berlin police at an internet cafe while reading news stories about himself after uh, quite the manhunt. He tried giving fake names before admitting who he was, and his identity was confirmed through fingerprint evidence. He's been sentenced to life in prison, and thank goodness. Glad to have someone that deranged locked away for good, and arrogant. And that brings us to the end of our time, and I'm suddenly debating signing up for a parcel pickup center instead of just having my mail come straight to my place for uh, safety. A healthy sense of paranoia has served me well so far. I hope you all enjoyed today, and if you did, feel free to give this video a like, subscribe, hit the bell for more from us here at Top 5 Scary Videos, and I'll see you all next time, you lovely spooky people.